What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. By request, I'm just going to go through my Eurorack system in this video. So just going to show you all the modules that I'm using, what I'm using them for, and, um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about what I might do differently because I'm getting to the point where I think I might replace some of these things. I've got some redundancy in here, and redundancy is crazy for a case this small. I understand that this is not the smallest case ever, but this is super portable. Um, and I've been traveling a lot. It's been really awesome. Uh, I got to play in Bristol at Machina, uh, Machina Bristronica. Thanks to Elevator Sound for that. Traversi and I went and played in um, Amsterdam at Amsterdam Dance Event. Thank you, Analog Kitchen, for putting that all together. Um, and I used this rig for, for all of those sets. Um, besides this, this is actually something I'm not using in this. I'm not going to use in this video. Um, so literally 6U, the launch control, and that's it. And so um, I've gotten some requests of people just asking, like, what's in what's in the case? And just uh, to get a you know a brief explanation of everything in here and why I'm using it. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll just dive in. First things, uh, real quick to explain, um, I'm also going to talk more about my techno side of things today. I used this same system. I'm going to explain a little bit about what I would do to make a house music set, but I don't, I'm not really going to take the time to go and change, um, change up the samples and some of the things. Um, we're going to talk more about techno because that's the last set that I did. So first things first, right here, I've got channel one on my Metron controlling a sample on the assimilator, and that's literally this sample. I've got a fader here on the uh, 410 that's the only thing this is doing is just decay on that kick drum. And this is just a sample. This is just a nice sample. I think Traversi actually gave me this by way of Circo. Um, so, you know, all the homies just sharing the love. Um, but, you know, it's just a big sounding kick drum. Secondary kick drum on channel two, I have Crater. And so this is just like to give me more rhythm and then I can play around with the with the uh, pitch envelopes and stuff. But for the most part, this is just like a tom. Ooh, there's that light that wasn't working. I'm gonna turn it off. Um, and so, yeah, basically this is just an, an extra thing. Then on channel three, I've got my hi-hat. And this is the hi-hat module from AMMT. So this is the one that we are working on. This is my new company. Um, with the founder of WMD, William, and then two other guys from WMD, Mason and Matt. This is our new company. We've been showing this at some trade shows. This is our weirdo hi-hat. Um, and basically that is channels three and four on Metrons, or on, yeah, on Metrons. So I've got the open on three, closed on four. Then on five, that's where my claps live, and claps are actually channel two on the mixer. So that just makes more sense to me on the mixer side. I do have sends and returns all happening in Bitwig. So I've literally got this verb send here. I've got a delay send. It's called filter on the on there. I should probably change what it's called, but it's just because there's a filter in front of the delay and that's what I automatically got. So I can put those effects pretty much on anything there, which is really nice. That's one of the ways that I was able to save space here is by moving all my mixing into Bitwig. And then I've got a shaker, channel four on the mixer, channel six on Metron. That's just another sample up here. Different kits have different um, samples, right? But for the most part, it's kind of a shaker thing. That's what I'm using it for. Okay. Then on channel seven, channel seven is, I believe, muted right now. Channel seven is this weird, which is it? I gotta figure out even what it is real quick. What is channel seven? <laughs> Channel 7. Channel 7 is, right now, I've just got this weird vocal sample running through it. It's super slowed down. Got some delay and reverb on this channel, so turn that off. 
But this is basically a subtractive voice. I've got an envelope and a VCA and a filter here. And so right now it's doing weirdo vocal sample stuff. And if I were to just let that keep going, you'd hear it's just a guy talking. It's my classic sample of a guy who thought that he left a bag of mushrooms at somebody else's house. Can we bring it up to speed here? Oh, that's a level, my bad. So that's all that is. So one thing I'll do to save space sometimes is I'll put a waveform here. So if I load this here, I'm just gonna add a saw wave, loop it. Whoops, loop it. Here we go. And now you can hear this is just a saw wave. And I'm just gonna leave this guy on all the time. One shot, there we go. Right, so sometimes I'll do that and use this as a synth voice. And I talk about that a lot in my videos, so I figured I would just show that real quick. And I believe that that is, oh, I have to turn off pitch. So that's literally just a looped waveform, loop saw wave, and that is running out through the filter and the javelin. So that's a good way to just save some space by using a sample for your oscillator instead of an, a full-on oscillator module, especially if you just need something simple. And what's cool about this is like you can choose any sample in here. You could also get weird, get crazy, and do zones and do zones, you know, like morphing wavetable stuff if you really wanted to. I don't really care about that. That's not my thing. But we go into here. We can choose all these different waveforms, right? So, like, just a great way to get more stuff. So depending on like the kit, I call um, the presets on um, the presets on a simulator. I call them kits because I, I think of it like a drum kit. I think of it as a kit of samples. So I, you'll hear me refer to this as a kit. So depending on the kit, depending on the sound I want, I'm either gonna put you know like you heard a random sample, a vocal sample, chords sound really good in there, or just a looped waveform. <laughs> So then that's seven. On eight, I have this fun little voice. And this, all this is, is literally a sine wave, I believe. Can I see? Yeah, this is a sine wave running through the aperture. And then that's going into Kozilin, the pitch shifter from Chaos Devices. And then that's going through a Javelin envelope. Right? And then right now I've got some shit like maxed on Aperture. You'd never be able to do this with Aperture if it was at the end because it'd just be like so loud, but that's cool because what we're doing is we're going in and we're clipping the input of Coslin, which is kind of maintaining that. But what I mean by that is I've got, I've got like the, it's a bandpass filter. I've got the feedback and the resonance all the way up to give us some crazy distortion. And then all I'm doing is just throwing some random pitch into that so I believe that's this guy yeah so if we go in to change up the pattern a little bit now I can control the different timbres with the filter up there the amount of FM that's going into the pitch shifter none tons change the range so that's just some good noise maker right there throw some reverb on there I had reverb with the delay being nice and snappy I might need 
need to work on some gain staging on that one because I've, I've been changing some stuff up and the gains are a little messed up. All right, so that's that. That's that one. And then to keep going on channel six, I also have number 11 is controlling this legion voice, which is two legions going through a carbon filter and one javelin envelope VCA. And those, that's on channel 11 here right now. That's just an eight step um, pattern with an eight step pitch pattern. That's this full terra that controls that. And this is an unquantized zero, negative five volts to five volts signal. So again, just a good noise maker. And for techno, like eight step patterns are what it's all about. over channel five so one of the things i wanted to mention is channel six just so you know i am muting all of those over here on metron so i have to remember what those are i've got channel seven channel eight and then channel 11 i have to remember what those are because those are grouped as a mono voice here in bitwig and i just did that you can see my other video about ableton it's the exact same thing i just did that so they're all on one fader so that way all my channels fit on the eight channel uh mixer interface here so i mute them over here and choose ones get gets getting played over here so that's a little bit of a pain but it works the next thing is i've got two stereo samples so this is channels five and six on the assimilator they're being controlled by channels 13 and uh, 15. I just split them here. I do 13 and then skip one and then go to 15. This helps me remember, this helps my brain remember where everything is. Um, and what I like to do with this is this is just a weird sample that I think I made with the um, uh, ARP 2600M. So I'll turn the effects off. So it's got spring reverb on there, but this is just a weirdo sample I made, right? We're listening to the whole thing. It's like a minute and a half long. So this is just me noodling, right? This is also going through this overseer filter, by the way. No modulation on that, just so that it's just there so I can kind of like filter it, EQ it a little bit. Still going, still the same sample. Okay, just started over. So what I like to do is sometimes I'll play the whole thing, right? We're jamming. And I'll give like full on 100% gain. And just let it play. Maybe throw some more delay on there. Filter a little bit. Then I'll switch from 100% gates to just triggers, right? And maybe change up the rhythm a little bit. You can hear it's starting over every time now. On this one, I am not controlling pitch with CV, I'm controlling sample point or start point. So check this out. We're just gonna randomly record in some voltage for this. So there we go, there's a whole new sequence. We're just jumping around start point for that. sequence all just 
made out of that weirdo sample. Channel eight, I've got the same thing happening. So this is like this big riser that I'll use sometimes. So if we listen to the 100% gate all the way through, yet again, this is perfect like just for building up something. Even bring that other one in. Switch it to triggers. Record a pattern for that one. Drop in. Now we're doing the exact same thing. We're just jumping around. Start point with this guy. I've got some reverb on there and delay. No pitch, just sample, just, just start point. So again, like just for like live performance, live improvisation, it just makes like for some cool happy accidents you just have these super long weird noisy sequences or uh, samples and then just jump around in their start points and just see what you get and then if you need to just like filter one under the other one you got those filters there for that so one thing i didn't mention about these mono voices is like channel seven i do have in bitwig a high pass and a low pass on channel seven and channel eight. So kind of mimicking what I have on Overseer here. So I'm putting this one on top of the other one, you know, just by like kind of filtering out the lows of that one and the highs of this one or the opposite, you know what I mean? So that's pretty much it. The only thing I missed, I guess I didn't talk about it, was a Basel pizza. I talk about this in another video. This is channel nine, and maybe that's muted here, yep. So basically, this is just an FM voice. I've got a um, Volterra to the pitch. secondary kick so that's too bassy and then on a secondary channel on this mono voice I have or not mono voice bass voice I can turn up just the square wave coming out of here which is filtered out and that's kind of my what I'm using as a sub oscillator really great for house music okay for whatever this is right now kind of in between or 140 so pretty fast and then yeah what you see me doing here these are just master effects in bitwig so i've got this big long chain over here we're gonna have to expand i guess so i've got high pass low pass and then i've got a reverb send or a delay send and a reverb send so it's really important to me that these are sends so how i do those is just with a tool and this chain feature here or effects layer so i've got a few different layers and then i just throw this in up with that with that knob so yeah for live performance improvisation of techno this is the setup um if i were going to switch gears and go over to house um i really want to do a video just about like what it takes for me to kind of switch gears um first thing i would do is i would instead of using this kick a sampled kick i would just use the crater kick instead so i just use this kick here and i put that on the four on the floors instead and i would change these up in the in the patches in the patch here i think that's literally what this cable is for um but you know make myself a kick for house music there slow down the tempo a little bit there we go 
<laughs> um, and why I would do that is then I would use this, uh, I'd use a different channel, but um, I would use this assimilator channel instead of for a kick, I would use it for another thing. So like another, probably a ride most, most often, but just another sort of percussion thing. Now that I have, now that I'm using Bitwig, um, I was using Ableton, um, and pretty much what I mean is now that I'm using the computer and a DAW in conjunction with my Eurorack, um, I'm always tempted to like just throw the, the the ride sample in here, but I don't really have the best way of interfacing with that. Launch pad would be great. Any sort of extra control, but that is one more thing. It's not, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it's just more to keep track of. So for me, the more I can keep in the Eurorack, the better. Um, but yeah, so that is, that's it. That's, that's the video. Uh, by the way, I am using the Expert Sleepers ES9. That's to get into the computer. So I have 14 analog inputs. Those, that's, uh, I'm using all 14 of them um, with some stereo channels. That's how I'm getting into the um, computer and in a Bitwig. And then I'm using the Novation Launch Control XL as my mixer or my mixer controller. So yeah, Bitwig right now is the mixer. This is the mixer controller. So that's it. That's the video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please like and subscribe, and we will see you all next time. Peace.